Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Isaiah Pierce, and this is Total Sovereign Grace Ministries. The title of our message today, Depraved Indifference. The term depraved indifference means this. It's a state of mind of one showing no sense of moral concern for others and acting wantonly without regard for the lives of others and unquestionably blameworthy. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today and we ask you to bless this message, Lord. We ask that whoever hears this message, that you may use your spirit, Lord, and come upon them, that they may receive this message, Lord. And if anybody that hears this does not know you, Lord, we ask that your will be done, that you save them, Lord, in Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The term depraved indifference means, in a legal form, having no regard or concern for the person affected. In general terms, it means someone who sees someone is in danger, and they do not care whatsoever. No attempt to save them is made. They do not even shed a single thought of doing something about it. A seared conscience, if you will. Why are we talking about depraved indifference? Why? Because right now across this land of plenty, we see Christians, quote-unquote, who have no concern, no trouble in their heart, no form of drive to evangelize the lost. That's what we're seeing right now. The lost are in danger of eternal damnation to the fires of hell, but many Christians have absolutely no concern about these people. They don't evangelize. They have no sense of empathy or care for the lost or where they're going. They have no care that the lost is about to bust the gates of hell wide open. These quote-unquote Christians have the ability to share the gospel to the lost, to tell them about Jesus and why they need him. They have the ability to say, turn from sin, but they don't. They don't care. It doesn't bother them. Depraved indifference is the ultimate form of selfishness and self-worship. Depraved indifference is self-idolatry. I've had many people tell me they are not worried about the lost because they are working out their own salvation. Oh, I spent a couple years evangelizing. I've put in my time. It's about my salvation. Wrong. 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 As the Prince of Preachers, C.H. Spurgeon said, he said, have you no wish for others to be saved? Then you're not saved yourself. Be sure of that. It's not enough to say to yourself, sure, I hope they're saved. It's simply not enough. You have the parachute. Throw the parachute to them and the wind will blow where it wills. They will recognize their imminent demise through the power of the Holy Spirit and they'll pull that parachute or they won't. But you need to evangelize. You need to tell them. Throw the life float to them, the word of God, but not modern Christendom. No, we're working out our own salvation. Let me tell you, that is the most taken out of context scripture that I know of. By that logic, Paul wasn't working out his own salvation. None of the apostles were working out their own salvation. Evangelists weren't working out their own salvation by modern definition of working out your own salvation. And they weren't fitting into that bill of working out their own salvation because they were telling everyone they could, repent and turn from your sin or you will perish. Do we see examples of depraved indifference in the word of God? Well, we most certainly do. Turn me to 2 Samuel chapter 12. And this is about King David and what he did with Bathsheba and how he had his most loyal man killed so he could take his wife. 2 Samuel chapter 12 and the Lord sent Nathan unto David, and he came unto him and said unto him, There were two men in one city, the one rich and the other poor. The rich man had exceedingly many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing save one little old lamb, which he had bought and nourished up. And it grew up together with him and with his children, and it did eat of his own meat and drank of his own cup and lay in his bosom. And was unto him as a daughter. We know how that is with our dogs and our cats. I let my dog sleep on the bed. We often give our dog food that we eat. This was like a child to this poor man, this animal. And there came a traveler unto the rich man. And he spared to take of his own flock and of his own herd. To dress for the wayfaring man that was come unto him. But took the poor man's lamb and dressed it for the man that was come unto him. And David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. And he said to Nathan, As the Lord liveth, the man that hath done this thing shall surely die. And he shall restore the lamb fourfold, because he did this thing, and because he had no pity. And Nathan said to David, Thou art that man. 
Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I anointed thee king over Israel, and I delivered thee out of the hand of Saul. King David had displayed depraved indifference. He had access to all the women he could. He was the mighty king of Israel, anointed by God himself, yet he took one of his most loyal men's wives and had his faithful soldier go into a battle he knew he would not survive. Nathan rebuked him for this. We need to understand that us not spreading the word to the lost is much worse because their eternal soul is on the line. Preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Don't be indifferent. We see another example of depraved indifference in the Bible. Turn with me to Luke chapter 16, verse 19. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died, and he was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torment, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. The rich man had access to all the food he wanted. He had access to all the drink he wanted. He prospered and walked by Lazarus with his depraved indifference and didn't even think to share a drop of food with him. Depraved indifference. Compare the rich man with quote-unquote Christians today. They have the spiritual food right in front of them and they are not sharing it with the lost who are starving and on their way of perishing to eternal hell. Paul writes in 2 Corinthians, But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Right now, in modern Christendom, the gospel is hid. Paul said, we don't preach ourselves, but here we see in America today, we most certainly are. We are preaching ourselves and not Jesus Christ. So often we see quote-unquote Christians talk about how blessed and highly favored they are, how prosperous they are, how they can do all things through Christ. Sure, the world eats that up. All the twisted verses of earthly prosperity, but where are the people saying you are a sinner and you're on your way to hell for all eternity, but there is a way of escape and his name is Jesus Christ. Where is that? Where is it? I'll tell you. It's practically non-existent. It's depraved indifference. Also because many Christians seek man's approval rather than God's approval, just like the Pharisees. They're worried, oh, you know, I don't want to deal with them, you know. I don't want to spread this to them because, you know, what? They're, they're going to think I'm one of those, those people. Yeah. Whose approval are you really garnering after? Want to see an example of modern Christendom in the Word? Turn with me to Revelation chapter 3, verse 14. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten, be zealous therefore, and repent." Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. 
To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my Father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. The lukewarm church had no redeeming qualities. They were lukewarm, weren't cold or hot. And Christ said, I'll spit you out of my mouth. Depraved indifference. Lack of concern for the lost, you see. Oh, they thought, oh, you know, we're rich, we're prosperous. No skin off my nose witnessing to the loss. I I don't want to do that. But if I had to take a guess, you're in the same boat as them if you think that way. You are just as lost as they are. But it's even worse because you think you're saved. You think you're working out your own salvation. No, my friend, you couldn't be more wrong. That's why we must do what Paul says, and that is to examine ourselves to see if we are in the faith. No desire or effort to see the lost saved. No urge to tell them about Jesus. (laughs) I would seriously examine yourself. Are you telling others about Christ and why they need Him? Are you evangelizing and spreading the Word? Are you pleading with them, turn from your sin? Or are you displaying depraved indifference? We ask the Lord to bless the reading of His Word today. Thank you and God bless you.